Hey there YouTube, back again, part two of the Tamiya Scania R470 build, really part one, we're just now going to get started. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single step one by one, I'm just going to talk about a few things, the way I, I like to put these kits together, and I'll point out anything that's tricky or, or anything that might help you along the way building yours. And I'm not going to drag you through the entire thing, watch video, that's too time consuming. Um, one first tip I wanted to, to share here, anybody that's put together a Tamiya kit knows that you've got all these bags labeled A, B, C, D, this one even has B, A, B, 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 C, and it it's hard to find stuff. I can't open all these bags because they have a lot of mixed big parts. But it's, it's pretty well clear, like, bag B, it looks like mainly all transmission gears. Bag B is front end suspension. Bag C is rear end gears, rear suspension. Not sure what F is, it looks like maybe the cab tilt, some stuff like that. Uh, e, some metal brackets, maybe like fairing mounts, chassis stuff, some mud flaps. But all the little bags, all the, the bolt bags I did go ahead and dump. and. This is what I use to keep everything organized. Let me zoom in on that for you. Just a ice tray. So we've got bolt A, bolt B, bolt C, and I have room over here to move things over. Um, what I usually do, got some small needle nose pliers. When I need something, I'll stick around. I can pull out one, set stuff aside make sure I find everything without having to dump it all out and go through it and then try to scoop it back up. It just helps keep it all in one place. Um, this one, bag A, had some shock mounts, uh, rod ends, front leaf mounts, and a few small screws and gears and stuff. So I didn't have a B. I already had B written on there from the last kit I built. So I just, that's all A. And I did buy ball bearings for this, uh, Nobody here in the United States on, on the eBay or Amazon had a ball bearing set for this kit. They were all from Hong Kong and I didn't have time to wait for them because I forgot to order them the same time I ordered the kit. So I had to buy some for a king hauler. So I've got a few extra bearings which would be handy. You can never have too many ball bearings laying around. But uh, yeah, so that, that should have everything I need for this kit and then some. Um, Definitely got the axle and the transmission covered. Hoping that I've got some that fit some of the, the steering links and stuff on this. I think they've got those those little pivot arms. But uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I, just, I saw this somewhere a long time ago. Somebody used a, an ice tray. And uh, it was a pretty impressive idea. So I stole it. Uh, I did have one issue with this before. I, was, I think it was when I was putting the King Hauler together the first time. And... Uh, it did get knocked over, and my world did come to an end. Because uh, luckily it was only half full. I was halfway through the build, but what a fiasco! I still never found every every little tiny screw and, and nut. It was just a uh, just a mess. So I highly recommend if you if you do something like this, maybe you can come up with something a little more stable than an ice tray. I don't know, maybe like a plate with dividers in it or something like an old cafeteria tray or something. But uh. My first recommendation is to keep it far away from the edge of the table. Way, way, way back. And keep it out of arm's length so you can't put your elbow on it and dump it out. But uh, first step here is setting up your servo savers and getting the, the servos on. So I've got to steal a servo from the King Hauler. For my steering gear, I'm going to use this RC four-wheel drive, what do they call it, twister twister high torque metal gear servo they're not amazing but it works I've got them on a couple of my rigs my rock crawlers it, it should be more than enough to, for, to handle this I mean this is a small truck it's not gonna be anything crazy as far as the steering torque it's not gonna need much and especially with the the Tamiya servo saver on there if it does get in the bind it'll it'll you know, it'll just have a little spring and it'll keep it from 
hurting anything. And I'm just going to use the standard uh, Futaba servo for the shift lever for now. Um, we'll go ahead and run through the first few steps. Get down here to step three where we start working on the chassis. And then we'll come back. Alright, so about to start step four. I've been at this now for oh, what time is it? about an hour and a half. Step three was pain. There's a lot to it. Step one and two were just mounting the servos up, the servo horns. Step three was basically build the entire chassis in one step. But uh, we've got it done. We've got our shift servo mounted. It's got a little guide for the rod. So we will see how that works out. But uh, I was cheating a little bit using the drill gun to start some of the screws in the plastic. I didn't want to tighten them all the way down because you risk stripping out the plastic. But it helped a lot getting them started because sitting there cranking all these by hand is tiresome. But up next we've got our rods. We've got the steering swivel, servo mount, front axle, shocks, mount the front axle. That's all on one open page, so it's going to be busy. Alright, we're up to step six. Step four, five, we're steering. And this one, if you're familiar with these at all, the king haulers and the, the long-nosed trucks have both servos in the front side by side this one being a cab over there's no room we've got the shift servo here shift linkage goes straight back and then our steering servo here on the side hangs down kind of low I'm not sure about that mount that's that's pretty flimsy I was just turning it by hand and it was bending the mount so may have to be on the lookout for a aluminum steer servo mount for this but uh, I did got lucky and I had ball bearings that fit this not necessarily sure you need them but I like to upgrade it when you can you can see that servo that, that side over there is particularly weak it's just pulling it all over the place look at that I don't know how that's gonna work Let's keep an eye on that. But next step is front end. Build the front axle, the shocks, and the step after that is getting it on. And the step after that is to set up the steering, mount the hubs, and get the front just about done. But uh, go ahead and keep trucking. All right. So I did have a quick tip. The uh, liquid thread lock here that comes with I don't know if this mine's old or it's just really fast drying when I was doing these U-bolts in the front axle they uh, I'd start one and then I would thread lock thread lock thread lock and by the time I got to the second one it was already getting tacky so that stuff you gotta act quick act really quick with and also I'm not using the Tamiya grease that they give one they usually don't have enough but these shocks are grease shocks they don't have anything in them but a spring and some grease so I do use this stuff here lithium grease it's what I'm using on everything it's real automotive stuff but it works a little bit better I think it'll last longer than the Tamiya grease plus I can use as much as I think I need to and not have to worry about running out because that's a giant tube. So I'm gonna go ahead and build these four shocks and then we'll get the front end mounted up and then we'll see what's next. I wanted to talk shocks real quick. If you've watched my other videos about crawlers, I was cussing RC four wheel drive for doing this type of shock. Their original super scale shocks were just internal spring their new super scale shocks are just internal spring grease 
Uh, to me, that that's pointless on a crawler because you have leaf springs on the lawn. That, like Trail Finder 2, it comes with those. And you don't need more spring, you need the oil. You need an oil filled shock to control the rebound. And the leaf spring will do the springy part. But on these, I, I can't see the point of an oil filled shock. They do, to me, it does have a, an aluminum oil filled shock set. But I think on here they're really just more for looks because on, on a rock crawler it's all about the flex. You're trying to get as much flex out of it and having an oil filled shock will give you help control the flexiness of the shock, help or the spring, I'm sorry. And on here you've got I mean we've got three three leaves on the front. Super, super hard. This this isn't about flex, this is about load capacity. The springs aren't really gonna do anything for load that, that or the shocks, I'm sorry. <laughs> Getting mixed up. The spring inside the shock is like something out of a big pin. It's not not very uh, absorbent. It's really really soft. It's more for looks. You're gonna get your, your load capacity out of these. They're not gonna flex. You're not gonna get a whole lot of body roll. You're not gonna be going fast either. These these semi trucks are you know more scale. They're gonna go scale speeds, haul heavy stuff. More like a, a real 18 wheeler. So I, I don't have a problem with these other than how they go together. It's kind of a, a pain. You got to stick a screwdriver down into the shaft, through the the upper part, and try to tighten up this plastic uh, bottom eyelet. It's a little bit of a pain, but they're nice and small. I don't know why on earth they made them pink. They've always been pink. No idea. But it is what it is. I, mean, I got a text, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the front end. Another uh, thing you run across with these, with anything that comes off a parts tree, you get these little burrs on parts. Uh, like these are for the front shackles, so that might actually get in the way. So it's very important that you cut those off. Some stuff it wouldn't like the cross members. You don't really have to, but I do all the plastic parts because it just looks better. And I'm trying to trying to make it pretty realistic and. You don't have metal or plastic burrs on stuff that's supposed to be metal, so I always try to cut them, cut them off. Not sure if you can see that or not. But these, it's important because that's going to be in the way. It might rub on something and cause the front end to bind up, and not work right. At least the suspension. It's just something I do. It takes a little extra time, but it's not a big, not a big deal. As long as you don't cut your finger off, you're all right. There we go. All right, another real quick observation I've had here: the front shackles. These, they okay. For one, you can't get your wrench on the nut on the inside. It's too close to the rail for that. So you have to use pliers or something to hold it. And two, you can tighten it way too much where these will not move at all. And that's gonna really screw up your front suspension if you when you push your leaf springs down and this won't move back. So you're gonna be forced on the forcing the spring down and your shackle's not gonna do its job. So you've got to find the balance between too tight. Like that one, I'm gonna loosen up just a little bit because I can move it easily, but it doesn't move on its own. That's that's what I want. But I don't want it to wobble in its place, the the bolt through. But you don't want it so tight that it's not gonna move when the suspension moves. That one would probably be okay. I may tighten that one up a little bit to match. But you you can't leave it too loose, or you'll get a whole bunch of slop, and your whole front axle will wiggle around. And I, I've seen a real truck do that one day. It's not. Not good for accurate steering, let's put it that way. And just another quick tip. Alright, we have the front end done. I have the front end done. The axle is ready for tires. Next step in the instructions is start to build the rear axle, which that won't take very long. Uh, probably, I'm hoping I can get it rolling tonight on this video. I have it have a rolling chassis. 
I don't have any paint for the body yet. I, I looked around at the local Walmart and uh, Home Depot. I, I don't know. After I, I, uh, I painted enough hard bodies now, I, I'm pretty sold on the Tamiya paints. They're just, especially the primer, the way they lay. I mean, they come in small cans, but it's it's a really fine spray, and you get a real nice scale finish out of them. Um, I'm leaning towards on this truck to paint it the blue, like the box heart, with the uh, matte black fairings, chassis bumper and chassis fairings and stuff. But we'll see. Uh, just have to run, see what uh, what colors I've got. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this bad boy rolling. So we'll get this rear axle built. I um, have some tips for that along the way. So here we go. Well, I'm gonna have to call it a night. Wrap this video up. I am short a part on the rear suspension, which is metal bag C. We have a left and a right uh, damper mount, and I only have a left. I could go ahead and build the axle, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop here for now. Uh, it's disappointing. I almost had it rolling. So I guess I've got to get in touch with Tamiya and figure out what they can do. If they can get me one. So, I'll keep you posted. This will wrap up part two. Let me show you what we got. There's our completed front end. And completed chassis. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll get part three up here before long, as soon as I figure out what to do about our missing part. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching.